Picking the Channel 7 Newsmaker or Newsmakers of the Year is never easy. The list of potential candidates come from all fields of endeavor. Normally, it's one individual that captures Michigan's attention, but not in 2021. Yes, last year, Jim Harbaugh of the University of Michigan Wolverines and Mel Tucker of the Michigan State Spartans competed against each other, as well as other football coaches from across the nation. And in doing so, they racked up record seasons and gave all Michiganders something to cheer about in the middle of a worldwide health pandemic and partisan politics. They were the glue that brought all of us together for a few hours each Saturday to proudly shout, go blue, go green and white. We're all from the Great Lakes State. So get comfortable and enjoy my look back and a look ahead with Tucker and Harbaugh, our 2021 Newsmakers of the Year. It's Sunday, January the 30th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is a special Spotlight. The University of Michigan football team started the 2021 season with gusto. They beat Western Michigan, Washington, Northern Illinois, Rutgers, Wisconsin, Nebraska, and Northwestern. On October 30th, Halloween weekend, they showed up in East Lansing ready to do battle against their arch in-state rival, Michigan State University. Both teams entered the national spotlight undefeated. The national buildup to the big game was electric. I got Michigan 24, State 17, baby. <laughs> But on this Saturday, the trick or treat would be on the Wolverines. Running back Kenneth Walker put on a display with his five touchdowns to overcome Michigan's 16 point halftime lead. What an amazing back and forth battle in this one. And everything was on the line here for both teams. Paul Bunyan, the celebration is on in East Lansing. Proud of our players. Uh, one thing that we know about our guys is that they're going to keep they're going to keep playing and never going to quit. We still got all our, our goals in front of us. Um, you know, it's a tough loss, but but one that I think we can bounce back from. Players played hard. You know, now they're going to have to strengthen the resolve. And that's exactly what they did. They tackled Indiana, Penn State, and Maryland. But on November 27th, inside a packed big house, Jim Harbaugh's winning season came down to one nagging question. After five tries and five straight losses, will you ever be able to beat the Ohio State Buckeyes? Well, it's real simple for me. Go blue, baby. <laughs> I got the flag the, today. I got the flag today, man. You ain't on your job. You ain't on your job, man. In dramatic fashion, Coach Harbaugh and his hungry Wolverines delivered their answer. Led by the defense of Aiden Hutchinson and the offense of quarterback Cade McNamara and the five touchdowns of running back Hassan Haskins, the Wolverines manhandled the Buckeyes. Michigan defeats Ohio State. 42 to 27, finally! Michigan fans charged the field for what Hutchinson said was the loudest crowd he's ever heard in Ann Arbor. And for good reason, everybody in this building wearing maize and blue had plenty of reasons to cheer on Saturday. Jim Harbaugh finally getting in the win column against Ohio State as a head coach. Asked afterwards to compare this win against the Buckeyes to all the other wins he's had here at Michigan as the coach. He smiled and his answer was simple. Man, it feels like the best one, you know. Um, <laughs> it sure does. We just knew that, you know, we were confident in everything we've done this year. You know, it's nothing, you know, we didn't, you know, we just didn't fear anything. And, you know, this team is dedicated. They put in the work and we knew we were prepared. This is the game. This is why everyone comes here. You said that this week to finally get the job done. What is running through your mind right now? Man, I, I can't even express my emotions right now, man. Everything's running through me. We got the job done and we're not done yet. 
the snow falls. You guys got to C.J. Stroud today. Everyone talked about their strengths. Your defense, that front seven, that was a strength you guys had. How confident were you coming into today? Man, we were so confident, man. We went out there, we executed, we did our job. We had guys making plays, and we got the dub. You know you could have gone to the NFL and you could have been a, a top draft pick. You wanted to come back. As you look back on that decision, what do you make of all of it? Man, this is why I come back. This, all this is why I come back. From there, Michigan went on to pound the Iowa Hawkeyes 42-3 and win the Big Ten Championship, earning them a chance to play number one Georgia in the Orange Bowl, where they were unsuccessful facing the powerful Bulldogs. Nevertheless, the Wolverines finished the season with an outstanding 12-2 overall record. Yes, it was quite a season. One important footnote. We wanted to talk to Coach Jim Harbaugh in person or via Zoom about his sensational season last year. We know he's been on the road recruiting for this year's season. But he did send us this very nice statement. Due to recruiting commitments, I am unable to accept this award in person. I want to thank the leadership of WXYZ for selecting me as a recipient of the Newsmaker of the Year Award. A rising tide lifts all ships, and this recognition is about our team. We had great success because of the hard work and effort of the players and coaches. The players made this a championship season on the field and conducted themselves on and off the field with great character and respect for this university. Our fans were tremendous all season, and our team appreciated the support that everyone showed to our program. Football is in a great place in the state of Michigan. I accept this award on behalf of our 2021 football team, coaches, and staff. I am honored to join a great list of distinguished honorees from past years. Coming up, inside MSU's amazing football season last year and my one-on-one -on -one interview with Spartan head coach Mel Tucker. We'll be right back. It's perfectly quiet now, but during the 2021 college football season, Spartan Stadium was a tough sea of green and white that opposing teams didn't want to enter. They were perfect on their home turf. In addition to defeating Michigan and keeping the coveted Paul Bunyan Trophy another year, MSU overcame all their opponents in 2021 except two, under head coach Mel Tucker. I recently caught up with the busy man for a thoughtful one-on-one -on -one conversation inside the Spartans East Lansing Stadium locker room. Coach Tucker, thanks so much for sitting down with us. Uh, let's reflect back a little bit on 2021. Uh, you got two big awards, one from your fellow coaches and one from the media. Uh, come a long way from selling meat out of the trunk of your car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, was, it's, uh, it was a good season for us. And, and uh, you know, we've come a long way as a program. And anytime you can, anytime you receive an award, um, like Coach of the Year, it's really, it's really a team award. It's not, it's not about me. I'm not a one-man show by any stretch of the imagination. And we all know football is the ultimate team sport. So um, that's just really just a reflection of, of our entire organization, all of our coaches, our support staff, you know, our players, you know, our administration, President Stanley, you know, Alan Haller, our board. Um, it's really um, this reflection of the, uh, what we've accomplished as, as a university. And so uh, it's, it's really uh, very humbling. And I was, I was uh, absolutely honored to, to receive those type of accolades for Michigan State University. Would it be safe to say, Coach, uh, because you've been around football a long time, you've got a very diverse career, but was this the year where things just seemed to really come together that maybe you got the greatest satisfaction? May not have been the greatest year, but the greatest satisfaction? Yeah, I, I was, I was uh, very proud of this football team. And before the season, um, began a lot of uh, p 
people ask me, what would success look like? You know, what, what would that look like uh, for you as a coach? And I really gave um, an answer that I'm not sure was very interesting, but I said uh, success for us would be if we reach our full potential. Football is about W's and L's. Yeah. Uh, when you reflect back on 2021, uh, certainly had a lot of success, 11-2 record. What was the low point of 2021? We had two losses, um, and it's never, it's never, um, it's never easy when it's never easy when you lose. So, um, you know, on the road at Purdue was really tough. You know, on the road at uh, at Ohio State and Columbus was was very tough. What's most important is what you do next. And so we're not going to get too high. We're not going to get too low. Uh, we're just going to keep shopping and be relentless. And the high points, was it beating Michigan? Well, I heard you on ESPN game day said, <laughs> I don't like Michigan. <laughs> well, they asked me a specific question. I gave them a specific answer. What are your real feelings about Michigan? Yeah, I don't like Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that. It's just not the game. That is the, the biggest game of the year for us and for me. And so um, being able to, uh, like you said, you know, finish in the left-hand column in, uh, in that game was very, very important. Uh, you recently spoke to the AFCA convention. And you told the audience, you said, success leaves clues. And you've had your magnifying glass out for the last 30 years. <laughs> uh, what did that mean? And, and talk a little bit about that, because when you came to Michigan State, you said you wanted to change the culture. Yeah, well, um, now I have paid very close attention in the past 30 years. I've been around a lot of uh, a lot of uh, great football coaches, and I've been a part of some great organizations. And um, success means uh, leaves clues. That that really talks about, you know, when you see an individual or you see an organization, you know, have success, and and they're able to sustain it. You know, they're doing something right. They're doing something right. So uh, maybe you ought to investigate. Maybe you ought to pay attention and maybe incorporate some of those things um, that is helping that individual or that organization be successful. Who's been your greatest mentor? Who did you learn the most by that you've taken what you learned from them and applied it here at Colorado and also at Michigan State? That's a, that's a tough one um, because even going back to my dad as my first coaching Little League Baseball. You know, I just learned so much from him. Um, coach Saban gave me an opportunity to start my coaching career here in 1997 as a graduate assistant. And three out of my first four years in coaching, I was, I was with him. And he really laid the foundation for me, uh, not just as a defensive back coach and a defensive coach, but as a, uh, as a CEO type of an organization. Um, I watched everything that he did, you know, whether it was X and O's on the field or everything he did off the field. And he was a very good uh, teacher. He's a, he, he not only coaches the players, but he coaches the coaches. And he's a great explainer. But along with Coach Trussell, Coach Alvarez, Romeo Cornell, um, I was with him my first four years in the National Football League as a coach. Uh, with the Browns, he taught me a tremendous amount. Um, you know, from that Parcells tree, Belichick tree, and and uh, and really, um, you know, a black head coach um, was uh, very instrumental in, in my development. So I learned a lot from players as well. You know, there was a, uh, you know, you can if you if you listen and uh, you listen to your players, you know, you'll learn a lot and you can become a, a much better coach. Coach, we're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, I want to talk to you about that big contract extension that you got. 
and the pressure that goes along with it. We'll be right back with Coach Tucker right after this. Coach Tucker, you brought great joy to Spartan Nation. Uh, you gave people in Michigan, whether they were a Spartan fan or they weren't a football fan at all, it gave them a release from COVID-19 and something to cheer about last year. Uh, your school rewarded you with a contract extension. Uh, not bad, beats selling meat out of the trunk of your car, <laughs> $95 million over 10 years. But I think they're making a statement. They're saying, we're investing in you and we want you to stay here for a long period of time. So what are your goals? By, in 10 years, what do you want to achieve for this university? Yeah, I mean, I've said it before um, that uh, I believe that uh, Michigan State uh, can and will be a championship program. I want to bring... You want a national championship. I want to bring a national championship uh, to Michigan State. And I want to be in that, in that conversation year in and year out, period. If we you know, are fortunate enough to, uh, to get to that point where we can uh, play for a championship, um, it's, it's not going to be about the opponent. It's going to be about what we do and our process and our plan and how we prepare and how we compete and how we finish. I'm a Midwest guy. I'm from the Cleveland area. My parents are, are three hours and 15 minutes away. You know, um, you know, I played at Wisconsin. You know, I'm a, I'm a Big Ten guy. And East Lansing is a special place to me. It really is. Um, and so, uh, you know, everything that, that I have wanted to accomplish as a head coach um, in, uh, in college football, I want to do it here. Coach, as we're recording this, is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. When we come back, I want you to talk about what that means to you and what you're trying to do here at Michigan State University. We'll be right back. As we're recording this interview, it's on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. We all know what Dr. Martin Luther King stood for, and one of the famous things he always said is, uh, the big question we need to ask ourselves is, what are we doing for others? Whether it's the contract extension and the pressure and stress that goes with that, or it's being a black head coach uh, and one of just a few, and if you look at the pros, and you certainly have been in the pros as well, there's one black head football coach, yet they're black players all over the field. Um, talk a little bit about that. One, the pressure you feel, but also the responsibility that you feel as a barrier breaker. Well, um, you know, my parents, uh, you know, when I reflect back, um, you know, my parents just really, you know, did a, um, did a phenomenal job with me. I was the only child for eight years. and. Um, I knew very early on, um, and they made sure that I knew that, that I was black and, uh, and, uh, and that there were going to be challenges uh, for me. And, um, and, uh, and so, and there's responsibility. Um, and uh, and uh, I just reflect back. Um, just this morning, um, I, re I was reflecting back on a, on a, um, I was very, very young. I think I might have been in the first or second grade. And, um, you know, I used to say when I was younger that I wanted to be an astronaut, you know. And so, um, and so it was Halloween and uh, my mom asked me what I wanted to uh you know, what type of costume I want. I said, I want to be, you know, I want to have, be an astronaut. So she goes to the store, she picks up a, an astronaut, you know, costume, and uh, they had the mask and all that. And it was, uh, the, the mask was, was white. 
is a mask of a, a white person. And uh, my mom's an artist, and uh, she, she paints, and she painted the face brown. She painted the face brown. And I was very young uh, at the time, and I was um, very upset that she did that. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to go to school with that, with that, uh, with that costume, with that, that, that mask. And she told me, she says, "You, you're black, okay? and um, you're not gonna wear." a white mask to school, okay? And you're going to school today, and you're gonna wear this costume. Okay? And, um, and I felt, for some reason, I felt a tremendous amount of pressure, for some reason, at a young age, when I walked into that school. And, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, when I got home, you know, my mom said, well, how to go today? When I told her that it went it went well, and I got a lot of compliments on my my costume from my my teachers and and um, and so um, you know pressure is a privilege. It really is, and there's no one there's no one that can put more pressure on me than I put on myself. And I mean, that's, uh, it's, it's, it's been that way for me for my, my entire life. It's that way now. I embrace it. Um, I know that I have a huge responsibility. I know that there's a lot of uh, people uh, looking at me and evaluating me and saying, want, want to know how's it going to go. And I know that I'm helping to create opportunities for other black coaches. Um, other black people uh, in this country, and uh, and that and that's and to me that's a privilege. This year, the Michigan Wolverines will host the Michigan State Spartans on October 29th, Halloween weekend. It will be the 115th meeting of a rivalry that started way back in 1898. Once again, congratulations to newsmakers Mel Tucker and Jim Harbaugh and we wish both of them the best of luck this football season. I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more newsmakers in the spotlight. We hope you have a great week.